Amen. I, I just really, um, I want to say real quick, uh, first of all, good morning. Uh, second of all, we're talking about worship today, and so uh, let's not, let's break our idea of what worship is, and let's not get out of that heart that we were just in. If God was doing something in you, he's not done. If God's speaking to you, he's not stopping. He's not shutting up quite yet. And, uh, and so let's keep that heart, because I really believe, I'm, I'm excited for what God has to say uh, to all of us today. But uh, I am, I, I also, I also, man, I want to highlight uh, real quick, because it's easy to walk in, and, uh, and, and things kind of just magically are, right? But at Millard North, every single thing that you see gets set up by this team and uh, all the sound stuff, all the, te- so what I want to do, I want to celebrate for just a second. Can we thank everybody who's done background work? Come on. That's not about the platform. It's about what you're doing behind the scenes. Thank you guys. Video, sound, pro presenter, all the people doing setup and tear down, the people and kids right now. It is incredible how the whole body of Christ, in, in fact, uh, when, when Paul talks about the body of Christ, he says it's the members of the body, the parts of the body that aren't as honored, that are hidden, that are behind the scenes, that actually the people need to bring honor to. And so what gets, what gets the most attention and honor? The platform, right? And so uh, using the platform to go, uh uh uh, no, 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 the big deal is actually the background. The big deal is actually all the things that made this happen. Because I just grabbed this mic, I didn't change the battery, I didn't set it up, I didn't turn it on, I didn't cue it, I didn't any of that stuff, right? That is this team. So come on, one more hand for this team. Let's go! Let's go to all our servant leaders at Collective. Big deal. We are talking about my offering. It's a series on worship. And uh, I've, I think I think God knows we're talking about worship because there's something special that he's doing, that he's been doing. And I believe that this whole series is just going to be this time where the, the time of worship is going to be even more powerful, even more intimate than we are used to and used to seeing and experiencing. But uh, I, if you haven't noticed yet, worship at Collective is, is a big Deal. We want to prioritize this thing. We find it's, it's, it's important to us. And it is something that we want to make sure that, it, that we are putting our attention and our heart to. And so the, the, the band and the worship leaders are coming in, prayed up, ready to go, and going, hey, God, I want to get out of your way. I don't want this to be the, the, the whole thing about me. I want to be the, this to be about you. And, uh, and so I'm so grateful, but that's why we want to hit on worship. It's one of the first things that we talk about. And worship, what the word means, the easiest way to remember what worship is, because sometimes we can get kind of a skewed idea of worship. Worship is, it's easy to remember, worth-ship. Worth-ship. It's just ascribing this or giving worthiness to God, who is the one who deserves it? All glory, all honor, all praise. It's that worth going back to him who he really, it's, it's, it's all from him anyway, right? And so this is, that's where it's ascribed to ascribe worth to God. And uh, because of that, because it's this giving back of this worth that's, that's always been his, this worthiness that's been his, it it, it's actually kind of this uh, to glorify God, to bring glory to, to exalt him, to say, hey, it's, it's about, I'm, I'm bringing it back to you. I'm focusing on you the whole time. And so uh, worship and uh, to glorify God, why we're calling it my offering is because to give God, we give God glory, how we glorify God. We give God glory by what we give to God. We give God glory by what we give to God. And that is my offering. This is what I have to offer. 
This is what I'm giving to you, God, right? And so that is, that's what this, this whole series is about. Last week, we talked about our faith offering, and we're, but really this whole series on give, it's, it's about giving. It's about generosity. And so we have this, actually, it's one of our six core values that we have here. If we can pull up the generous living slide. This is one, this is one of our values that you'll see. It is our joy Remember we talked a couple weeks about it's our joy to give. It's our joy to give our time, abilities, and resources to serve people and God's mission. We meet the needs around us. Very practical. I give of what God's given me back. He's blessed me, I bless others. That's part of my response, right? It is this, and, and that's this generous living. It's not just a uh, part of our life. It's a, it, it, our, we want to live generously. And that's why we're talking about my offering. Last week, we talked about our faith offering. It was, it was exciting because we got to share some vision. What's God doing? What is God going to be doing? What are we believing God for? And that is exciting, uh, but it is. It's just these small beginnings. It's being faithful in the little things. What am I going to give God right now? And uh, so our faith offering, our faith offering is our generous sacrificial offering to amplify the message and accelerate the mission God has given to collective. And uh, a couple things that I forgot to mention last week. First of all, uh, a couple of you guys said, hey, I want to give to this, but I can't right now. And so we're going to keep the faith offering tab on the giving thing open the rest of the month. Uh, And so if you want to give, if you want to respond to that, the other thing is some of you guys uh, have, have expressed or may have my application of worshiping God by even the resources and through my finances and things like that. My application is not just a one-time generous sacrificial gift, but it's a regular ongoing tithe that I'm going to give to the Lord. And, th- and that's, that may be what God's speaking to you. If that is the case, don't use the faith offering option on that, uh, on, on, because one, it's an obedience thing and not uh, like tithe and giving, uh, giving regularly is this obedience thing. It's actually not even biblically generosity. That's how drastic, how, how, how big God views generosity. That it's like, hey, give your, give your 10% and that's obedience. Beyond that is generosity. I'm like, dang, man, you're, you're serious about this, right? And, uh, and so, but this, that, and so don't, don't put that in the faith offering because what you'll do if you want to set up a monthly uh, recurring gift on faith offering, it'll be a recurring monthly gift for one month. So it won't actually work. So you just go, go right into the general fund. I had some questions about that. So hopefully that should help uh, depending on what your personal application, what God's speaking to you about that. But we are, uh, as we talk about worship and you think about worship, what's the first thing that you think about? All right, we, think about we think about probably the time we just got out of, right? If I say worship, Think about some killer music, right? I got my worship playlist. I mean, there's worship and gospel music, right? There is, there's, that, it's an entire genre. And, uh, and, or you may even think about going to church, right? Worship service. That's what it is. Okay, I'm going to, uh, some, some traditions say I'm going to worship. The place and the thing and the activity that I'm going to is called worship. And we see that that's actually, um, it's, it's part of it, but it's not the whole thing, right? Worship is actually a much bigger picture, but, and so I want to do a little bit of a, I love, I love studying God's word. I believe that for, uh, if, if you're anything like me, I got to get here in order for it to get here. Right, And so I got to dive in. I got to see what God's word is saying about this. So if we do a little bit of a topical study on worship and you see what does it mean throughout scripture, there's two different parts of of the Bible. The Old Testament, which testament means covenant. 
the old covenant, the old commitment, the old uh, relationship definition. And you're like, we got to redefine the relationship kind of thing. And, uh, and then the New Testament is this new covenant, this new commitment, and the new way that the relationship between God and man works. And in the Old Testament, one of the number one things that changes between these is worship. When people say, I'm going to go worship at the temple in the Old Testament, they're saying, I'm going to go bring my dove, my lamb, my grain, my whatever it is, and I am going to sacrifice it. I will literally, I'm going to, worshiping at the temple literally is walking in with a live living animal, killing it, putting it on the altar, and like, it was very much a very practical thing. This is what I'm doing. I am worshiping God through the way that I sacrifice this because I, we, we need to cleanse from my sin, and the only way to cleanse from sin is blood because and when I sin, I'm away from God. He is life, so that for, therefore that means death, and so we need a blood sacrifice, some death to be able to bring in, to bridge that gap, but a lamb certainly doesn't quite cut it for for my sin, right? And for the separation between me and God. And so it's kind of that, this, this symbolism, but it's broken. And, and that's really what when people thought about worship, they thought about sacrifice. In fact, the very first time that the word worship is used in the Bible, you'll find it in Genesis. And this is when Abraham and Isaac and a couple servants were walking up a mountain. God had just spoken to him and said, I need you to sacrifice your son for me. He's like, what? I thought that wasn't your thing. Like God specifically says, don't do child sacrifice. Right? He's like, I... but it's very clear. That's what, okay, I'll, I'll obey. I'll, all right. And so what does he say to his servants? He stops them and he says, okay, from here, you guys stay here. My son and I, we're going to go worship. First time the word worship is used. And he has full intention to follow through waiting for God to bring the answer of who knows what. He must bring this kid back to life. He's, I don't know what he's going to do, but I believe that God's going to do it because God spoke this kid to me. God, and there, oh, there's so much in that one. Different sermon, different time. I, got, I get excited about But that's the first time worship is used. Worship, and this is what we're talking about today. Worship is sacrifice. If you're taking notes, go ahead and write that down. Worship is is sacrifice. That is what it is. That's, that, that's a, a major part of how we worship, what we do when we go to God. And, uh, but then we see, so this, this sacrifice piece is the same, but then we start to see these hints of a transition. We start to see these hints. We see it first in 1 Samuel 15, 22, when Samuel said, Did the Lord take pleasure in burnt offerings and sacrifices? Does he? Not as much as obeying the Lord. Look to obey. Obey is better than to, to obey is better than to sacrifice. To pay attention is better than the fat of rams. It's like, hey, I'm, your offering, your sacrifice. It's great, but what, what I want, I want your heart, right? That's why we go to our resources, because our resources are that symptom. When we, when we address the symptom, it helps us to go, oh, man, this hurts. I don't like giving. I don't like taking this lamb. I don't like giving this offer. I don't like giving into this. It, it just, ah, oh, it hits this thing, and I realize that I got something still in my heart that I need to purify, right? So it's this sacrifice piece of worship. And then Jesus says very clearly to the Samaritan woman, in John chapter 4, so this lady, he's, he's walking, uh, he, he's, he's needing some water, and this Samaritan woman, which Samaritan just means essentially like this, in a very, very, very racist culture, uh, they, it's, it's essentially a half-blood, half-breed kind of thing. Okay, so you have Jews, and if you weren't a Jew, you didn't like the Jews, because the Jews were like these caught, like self-righteous, like, we are God's people, you are not God's people, y'all stink, we are great. And uh, so the Gentiles, Samaritans didn't like the Jews, but the, uh, the Samaritans were 
both Jew and Gentile. They're like this, this mixed breed of both. And Gentile just means not a Jew. And so they're, there's no, they didn't really fit anywhere. The Gentiles didn't like them. The Jews didn't like them. And so they fit in this Samaria place where like no one really talked to them, right? No one, the, and so Jesus starts talking to this Samaritan big deal. Jesus starts talking to this woman, another big deal in that culture, in that society. He's breaking down these racism, sexism, things like that, that he's breaking down. And, uh, and he talks to her and she, and she then goes, wow, I can see you're like a prophet. You're a big deal, dude. Okay. So then here's my question for you. Where are we supposed to worship? She asks a worship question because we have, we have this, 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 this high place on this mountain over here that we like to worship at. But you Jews say that that's not a good enough place, that we have to go to Jerusalem. Tell me, where am I supposed to worship? And we don't know if it comes with attitude or if it comes with like, oh, finally, I've been looking for an answer to this question. But we do see that this is a prevalent issue that she has experienced that's been going on culturally there. And then Jesus says this, He says, a time is coming, indeed it's now here, when true worshipers, true worshipers, so what is he saying? He's saying, ah, not all of that is real worship. The best worship, true worship, will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Not in Samaria or Jerusalem. In spirit and in truth, the Father is looking for those who will worship him that way. For God is spirit, so those who worship him must worship in spirit and truth. What does he do? He takes this external. How do I worship? I go and I sacrifice. That's what I do. How do I worship? I show up to service. That's what I do. Right? And he says, no, 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 no. He takes this Do I worship here or here? How do I do it? What do I sacrifice? Where am I going? No, no, no. He says, I'm making it internal. I switch it up from the external. What am I doing to the internal? I can go to church my whole life and never worship God. It's scary. It is scary, but that's the reality that, that, that there is an inner spiritual reality to worship that we are all called to. And if our heart's not there, we're not actually offering anything. He says, I don't want your sacrifice. I don't want your fat of ram. I don't want your, I don't want you the, the showing up to church and the like, all, the, all this. You think it's great. You think you're like checking this box and getting my approval and all. It's like, I want your heart. I want you. I want you to, yes, I want you to obey. I want you to follow me. I want you to do those. Serving's good. Showing up is good. Yes, it starts there. But I really want you. And that's this offering, this sacrifice that we give to God. And this is where we get our main passage in Romans chapter 12, verse 1. If you don't have this verse memorized, you should memorize it. It is, it is such that it's transformational. It's the transitional verse in this book, the book of Romans. And the book of Romans is kind of giving this theological bridge between the practical judgment and mercy and righteousness of God and the Old Testament and the now and what is Jesus' role in all this. It's incredibly deep. It's really powerful. But uh, this is the transition statement. So he says, therefore... Therefore, anytime you read that in your Bible, ask the question, what is it there for? What's it there for? And so therefore here means in light of everything else that I've said for the first 11 chapters here. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, he's, un, he's unraveled all this about God's mercy and his grace, about bringing everybody into the kingdom of God. In view of God's mercy, offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is real worship. That is the best worship, true and proper worship. That's worship. That's what worship looks like. That's what it should be. It is this self laying on the altar. Now, the interesting thing here is that key statement, living sacrifice. It's actually an oxymoron. It makes no sense. 
It doesn't fit together. Why? Because sacrifice is the giving and killing of something. It's the putting to death of a thing, right? All these people, they have very, very real images in their head about going to the temple and seeing their animal just die. Like literally, they, like very real, very gory, like, ugh. Like that's, that's the, and he says, I want you to be that in a living way. It's this like, what in the world? How in the world am I supposed to? He says, that's worship. That's worship. I'm going to, what am I going to do? I'm going I'm to get back on the altar. I'm going to put my very self, my body. He says, offer your bodies. It's this whole thing. It's the whole self, my physical, my heart, my spirit, my everything. That's, I'm crawling up on the altar again and I'm going, okay. I'm dead. I'm dying to myself. I'm dying to my desires, my thoughts, my wants, my pursuits, my all this stuff. Because if you're anything like me, man, we can surrender, we can give to God, and then what do we find ourselves doing? Right back. Right back where we were. Right back in our same mess, pursuing the same things, and, and go, oh, man, all right, all right, I need to, I need to fix this. I need to get back to the sacrifice. I need to get back to the altar. I need to crawl back up there. I need to give my, to die to myself again, again. And so this, this worship at this point, this is this crazy definition. It goes from this external sacrifice to this internal reality of giving my whole self to God. My whole self. And so this is, it's, it, it's very motive oriented. What is my pursuit? When I worship, it's what I'm giving worth to. So my actions, every action that I have is, a, is, is actually has a conscious or subconscious motive and a pursuit in it. Naturally, biologically, we operate by instinct. What is going to flee is is going to flee pain pursue comfort and have the highest chance of survival right that's just instinct i'm going to do that and if, and and we all will naturally go in that direction if we don't choose intentionality the thing about worship is worship is very natural we are always in a state of worship in a state of pursuit and ascribing worth to something that is worth this decision. The reason I'm doing this is because I, 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 I see the value in it. I value that, and that is my pursuit, and so it's, that's my motive. And so we're always in this state of worship. Worship is natural. Worship of God is not. Worship of God has to be intentional. And I believe that's actually part of the beauty of the way that God created us. We have this sinful nature that doesn't actually, isn't actually designed to constantly make us want God all the time, right? Like going to church, I don't, I don't always want it. I don't, oh man, I don't, like I, 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 don't, I don't, just don't feel like it, right? I don't feel, turn the worship music off. It's just not hitting my vibe today, right? Oh, just, man, I don't, it, it's this, it's this thing inside of us that doesn't always want it and so worship has to become a choice i am going to choose to worship not because i want to simply because he's worthy worship is actually a it's it's traditional it's supposed to be a response it's a response to God, to his goodness, to his glory, to, to who he is as sovereign, almighty, omniscient, omnipotent creator, right? He is God. We are not. I'm going to ascribe that worth to him as a response to who he is and who I am. He is worthy of it. That's why I worship and so, in any point, in every point of our life, we are worshiping. What are we worshiping is the question. What am I pursuing? 
What's my desire? What's my idol right now? What's the thing that I'm bowing down to in my heart? And if we don't, if we don't realize this, that, that thing that we're worshiping, if we, don't, if we don't intentionally switch that, the thing that we're worshiping is usually us. And I want to be comfortable. Man, I want, I want safety. I want to, like, all, all this, all this we, we, we pursue these things naturally that just sound so great and they're found to be so hollow that we actually aren't worship, we, we actually aren't finding our purpose in that because worship is who we were made to be. We we're created to worship. That's why when you come in here and you dive deep and you let your heart get into the worship, the music, and, and you're like, oh my goodness, this is right. You know? It's just, it's like, oh man, something, this is just good. This is just, everything in me is like, it doesn't, it doesn't feel, I don't want to, maybe I didn't even want to be here. Maybe the first five minutes of it, I didn't even want to do it. And I was just like fitting, twiddling my thumbs and like, whatever. But I'm, but man, here, it's so good. What's that? It's that this content, this like, all right, this is what I'm created for. This is it. This is God and me. It's our design is to worship, but not just worship, to worship God. And so we got to ask ourselves, what am I worshiping right now? Remember the time when I realized this and started to get this. Now, I, I feel particularly just the depth of what worship is and what worship means and to worship with my whole self at all times um, has just been a, a, an intense thing for me to go through in my message prep this week. It's going, man, I feel really inadequate just in how is every breath really worship? Is every motive really worship? You know, I'm seeing my sin and my mess more than ever as I look at what worship is supposed to be. My whole self, always sacrificed, always on the altar. And I'm like, man, there's a lot of times I'm not very good at it. There's a lot of times I'm not giving to God what he's worthy of. And, and it's, it's, it's this con so it's this constant battle that we're never actually going to fully get to until we have given all glory, all of ourself, every little last bit of every motive, thought, emotion that we have given to God. All to him, not to us. And, uh, but but the, the time when I first, I remember getting this so deep, I have, my dad uh, is, is, a, is a pastor. I am so, I see it, and I'm not going to hide it. I'm not going to pretend like it's not. I, I feel so blessed because I have a great relationship with my father, and not many people do. And so I recognize that, but I do also say at the same time, he's, he's the person who I go to for spiritual help. So you don't even need, even if you don't have a great relationship with your father, find a spiritual father. Find someone who you can go to, man, I don't know what to do. I'm stuck. I'm having a hard time. What do I do? Who's that person that you go to? Find a spiritual father, spiritual mother, someone that you can go to that you can go, hey, I, I need some help. I need some help, right? One of the best ways to do that is actually, if you don't have that, start by joining a group. And when you join a group, that is going to start to be these spiritual brothers and sisters, and you might even find a spiritual mother or father. Someone that's in there that you're like, oh man, I'm gonna I'm gonna come to you when life is miserable. Uh, so that's where I was. It was it was we had just been married, and uh, my Morgan and I, and uh, I was a senior in college, and I was not one of those smart plan ahead seniors. I was one of those like let's save all the hard classes for the end, right? And so I did that, and I was in the, the hardest semesters, the most difficult classes that I took were in my senior year, in our first year of marriage, and uh, I was working multiple jobs to try and, like, show this, this beautiful bride of mine, like, yeah, hey, I can provide, but I wasn't doing a very good job, and uh, I was like, I, I, and so we were, we were struggling financially, I was struggling, struggling in my, my schoolwork and my education, I was, I was 
doing ministry and volunteering at church at the same time. And, and I just had, I had all this stuff. I had an internship that I was at at a church in Missouri Valley. I had a church that I was serving at in Omaha. I had two jobs. I had one at UPS. I had one at uh, where I was selling Cutco. Anybody know Cutco? Come on. Anybody got knives that I sold you? Come on. There we go. I got a couple family members right there. There you go. Thank you. Thank you. You literally made our family operate, kept our marriage together. Thank you. <laughs> that is, but, but this is, the reality of this is in this place, I, felt, I was so pulled in a million directions. And every time I thought about it, I was constantly in this place of, I can't. I can't. I can't. I should be this. I should be this. I'm underperforming here. I'm underperforming here. I'm doing, I got, and so I went to my dad and he was in his office. Uh, he worked at Nebraska Christian College and I went to my dad and I was like, dad, I just, I'm not, uh, it's, it's too much. It's so much. What do I drop? I have to drop something, right? Because I've got, I mean, and I started listing it off. And I'm like, I got this job, I got this job, I got this wife, I got this new family that I've, I've married into as well. And, and so like, and, and they got all their traditions and we got all our traditions and I'm trying to make that work. And then I got all these school and this class and this class, and this all, I got all these papers, I got all these exams. And then I've got this internship that I'm doing where I'm, where I'm serving at this, this place and I'm, and I'm trying to serve over here as well. And I'm just, I'm so pulled in a million directions and I don't know what to do. How do I do it? Every time I think about one, I'm thinking, about also everything else and I just it's never I'm, I'm so stressed it's so anxiety giving and everything right and my dad says all right what list, list it off I write it down and he says you got this you got this huge list of all these responsibilities he said let's take that away from a list and make it a pie chart okay let's 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 put it in a circle because really all you're doing you got one job at all times, to glorify God. Your goal is worship. Done. Your goal is to glorify Him. Done. How can you glorify God right now? How can I worship God right now? It was actually a transformational conversation that I had with him that, that has shaped so much of who I am today that has made me go, what am I worshiping right now? Is it success? Is it what, what, whatever it may be? What am I worshiping right now? And instead, I'm going to choose to worship God. I'm going to choose to worship God. But worship, choosing to worship God is not easy. Remember, worship is sacrifice. So if worship is sacrifice, if worship is giving, then it's got to cost something. Right? First Chronicles. I love this. This is King David, a man after God's own heart. First Chronicles, King David said to Ornan, so what's going on is he needs this threshing floor for, for what God's calling him to, and he's like, this is my offering to God, this threshing floor, and, and this dude, Ornan, who owns this threshing floor, he's like, King David, I will give it to you. That's for God. That's a big deal. That is great. Take it. And David goes, this is his response. He says, No. I'm going to pay the full price for this thing. Thank you for your offer, but no, I'm going to pay the full price. I will not take for the Lord that which is yours, nor offer burnt offerings that cost me nothing. I will not give to the Lord that which costs me nothing. My worship is sacrifice. My worship must be sacrificial. So if worship is all-encompassing, if worship is sacrificial, if worship is everything that I'm doing, what does it mean to me right now? What am I worshiping right now? And this is, this is just, I want you to ask yourself that question. What am I worshiping? Start asking that question regularly. And even going, what does sacrificial worship mean for me right now? Right now. Because it is, it is all encompassing, all encompassing. Worship is described in Colossians 3, 23. Whatever you do, work at it with all of your heart is working for the Lord, for it's the Lord that you're serving. Colossians 3, 17, whatever you do in word or in deed, do it all in the name of Jesus, giving thanks to God. 1 Corinthians 10, 31. So whether, whether you even eat or whatever you're drinking, whatever you do, do it all for the glory of God. 
It is crazy how all-encompassing worship is. He says, hey, while you're eating your meal, while you're sipping your coffee in the morning, are you worshiping God? Are you being thankful? Are you going, oh man, this is incredible. I love it. I love what you're doing, God. I love how I'm so grateful for the things. I'm enjoying you right now. So like for me, I catch this. When I sip my coffee in, this mor- in the morning, I, I, I can see my heart in this and I can see my, when I'm off, when I sip it and I'm like, oh, thank you, God. Oh, that's so good. I'm just enjoying you. Or this doesn't sound bad at all. It's not bad. It like, but but this, is, this is the other thought that I have. I'll sip it and I'll go, oh my gosh, I need that so much. I'm gonna need this caffeine inside of me right now. I'm just in desperate play. Like I need this. And if you catch that, I wish I could see a transcript of my life because the more times I say, I, me, I, me, I, me, I, me, I can see where my motive is, right? I can see my focus. Suppose, oh, thank you. You're so good. I'm enjoying you. You're the key subject of all my sentences. You're the key subject of my, my motive, my heart, my worship. And this is in everything, in everything I give to you. So worship and sacrifice may look like something as simple as that, finding God in the little moments worship is sacrifice for you may look like choosing to be thankful in a season that maybe it's a little difficult to be thankful i'm gonna i'm gonna see you somehow in this and i'm gonna be grateful for maybe the little good thing you know maybe i broke my leg but i didn't break both yay you know like i'm gonna I'm a choose to be thankful it's my sacrifice that i'm giving to you and that maybe, maybe it's a major morality or character adjustment about going, all right, I got to switch some things up in my relationship. I got to switch some things up in my life. I got to cut this thing out of my life. It's, it's, it's just not good for me. It's not doing good for my heart. I got I to gotta break this. I got to take time off my phone. I got to delete these apps. I got to get some accountability for what I'm looking at. I got to make sure that what I'm, what, what I'm, what I'm smoking, what I'm drinking, what it, like, am I glorifying God? Am I worshiping God in every action? Am I worshiping God in everything that I do? Maybe it's even relationship, like, man, should I, who am I, who am I going after? Who am I chasing? Maybe it's even just a want to, right? Man, I don't, I don't want to. I don't want to worship right now. I don't want to get in here. And, and uh, the prayer that I pray, because we all have been there. First time I prayed this prayer, I remember going, God, I don't want to but I want to want to I wish I wanted to I, I have a desire to want to but I just don't I feel like I should but I don't maybe that's your maybe that's your sacrificial worship God I want to want to help me maybe your sacrificial worship is coming broken when I've got nothing left to give Maybe the crawling on the altar is maybe all you can do and you just go, hey, this is all I got. I'm a mess. Maybe it's listening and expecting God in the middle of a suffering season. Or choosing to obey him even when it actually is at my own expense, right? That's worship. The disciples even go, when they celebrate, they're like, I can't believe I was just beat for the sake of the gospel, right? That's incredible. I love it. I was counted worthy to suffer for the name of Jesus. That's worship, right? That actually was worship. That's crazy. So if we can stand up real quick, what I want to do is, is I, want, I want for every single one of us, there's not a single person in this room that has got worship right. There's not a single one of us that has got this, but there is, there are some people specifically. So I want to say, if if you go, man, I'm feeling it. I'm feeling God pull me towards worship of him. And I want to respond in this. I want to give that. I want to choose that. Then I want to give you the opportunity to respond here. Come up and go, I'm crawling on that altar again. Or maybe it's your first time. Maybe it's your first time or first time in a long time where you're going, I got to give my life to him. Remember, sacrifice is a giving 
into killing of something for the Lord. I need to put to death myself and I need to be raised to life by you. On my desires, my thoughts, my, my wants, my motives, my pursuits, I need to put those to death. And maybe that's you. If that's you, and that's the first time in a long time, that's what we like to call salvation. It's this saving from the mess that of choosing to pursue myself and I'm gonna put myself on the altar. And then what I want is, is after serving, we're gonna have a prayer team right over here in the corner, right up front here. And you're gonna get an opportunity and I want you to just go talk to someone and be like, hey, I need to give my life as a sacrifice. And that's it. I need to offer myself as a sacrifice. Whatever you want to say, I need salvation. I need Jesus. Whatever you want to say, and whatever words that you have that you feel like Jesus is saying to you right now, that's it. For all of us, though, I want us to choose right now to crawl on the altar. Can we put Romans 12, 1, back up on the, on the screen? To offer our bodies as a living sacrifice. Let's choose this. Let's choose this as a church. Let's choose this as individuals. God, would you put in us a heart to worship you? Would you break our hearts, God, for the areas and the times when we have chosen to worship self? Would you help us to even see the different motives and the selfishness and the worship that we choose in other areas, God. Help us to become aware of the problem that we may not even see. God, we want to worship you. We want to see you receive all the glory, all the honor, all the praise that you deserve, God. In every aspect of our life, we give it to you. In Jesus' name, we pray. If you need prayer, if you want to respond, you can come up. You can find a place in this room. You can come find the prayer team. But we're going to take a little bit of time right now just to worship. We're going to take some time to dive into this song, and I just want for you to position your heart. Don't let a single word come out empty.